Demetra. Yes. Hello. Can you see me? I can hear you. Yes. Okay. Very good. So tell me, where are you today, Demetra? So I'm at our uh, workshop and uh, head office, which is uh, in the north of Athens. Mm -hmm. Workshop used to be um, below the Acropolis. Uh, it was next to where my father was born. And after a while, the production couldn't be continued there anymore. We moved it and the location where the workshop was, which was actually quite charming, very labyrinthian, uh, became the Elias Lalonis Jewelry Museum. Shall we, show, shall we show a picture of your mother and father? Because they look, look, Christina's going to show you. Yeah. Isn't that cute? So where, where was that taken? In the uh, theater in, uh, the, just below the Acropolis. And it's like two minutes away from where uh, the workshop is. So it's still very much, the roots are in the same place, aren't they? Yeah. My mother was my, my father's muse throughout their life together for 57 years. That's so romantic. And now I'm going to show a picture of the four sisters because this is a girl power company. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I have to my head back to see what. So, so we've got. Um, from so, my... um, on the left is is Maria, my uh, my third sister. She is uh, a designer and creative director. Uh -huh. uh, and I come and I take care of international business, whatever is outside of Greece, and I work very closely together with Maria. Katerini, who is our older sister, she's in charge of retail and she also does PR with her daughter, Laura, also does our social uh, network Instagram. And then on the right is Joanna, who is uh, the youngest and she's the director of our museum. Fantastic. What, what a, a, a wonderful lineup of female talent. Not, not a lineup we do very often, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to see it. So your dad would be incredibly proud to see it, I'm sure. Yeah, we hope so. Yeah, we do our best. <laughs> so um, in people's minds, when they hear the name Lalaunas, they think of these really sculptural, big gold Greek pieces that were so much of an era, weren't they? Yes, definitely. I mean, when he started creating, um, you know, he, he originally, his family business was uh, in, in jewellery. And... Like this piece, sort uh, of thing. Exactly. That's one of the early pieces which shows the boldness of gold, very pure forms. Um, he, he started doing that when he looked at Neolithic art and then he loved the glow of, of the gold. So here you see the hammered surface uh, in a necklace inspired by the Ilion collection, the Helen of Troy collection. Here you see Constantine piece. Um, he, he actually looked throughout the Greek uh, history. He was a lover of, of uh, his heritage, his culture, and he joins drew inspiration many different uh, uh, parts of, of the Greek history and Byzantium is a very strong one. It combined granulation that excited him in the Hellenistic piece. And, and the way that your father came to um, create what we know as Lalonis now was actually quite um, sort of providential. He didn't choose to be a jeweler, did he? What's the story there? No, he didn't. I mean, his family, as I briefly mentioned, jewelry and watchmaking and uh, they were originating from Delphi. He actually was born and brought up, studied law and economics and wasn't really thinking about jewelry until the 40s came that you have to help us, you have to come and run the company, which he did. Now the company at the time would create jewelry, which was quite generic, beautiful, beautiful well-made, but you could find them also in Europe and no, there was no uh, special character to them. Mm -hmm. so he himself, historian and intellectual lover of his heritage and he wanted to breathe new life old smithery so basically it came it just he found his way if you want and uh, he started studying especially the art of uh, classical and hellenistic uh, times looking at the jewelry throughout the museums in greece uh, was fascinated also by the heads because they were also symbols of power and strength lions rams bulls snakes Shall we show the lions? I think this is um, one of the classic pieces that we, we think of as Lalonis. Is that right? And I'll show you some here. I'll show you some. Um... Oh, beautiful. Yeah, let's see the real thing. Let's see the real thing. Because we've been practicing, haven't we, Demetra? <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. So that's wow. one the original ones. Fantastic. And could I still buy that if I wanted to, Demetra? Some pieces we still make today. Um, uh, then we also make pieces today with the same uh, idea of the past, but 
adding our own input, but some of the old pieces can be made. Most of them can be found, of course, in our museum. And you can see some other ones. This is with 22 karat gold. You can also see uh, another version with uh, gemstone, slightly different techniques. Mm -hmm. uh, then you can also see um, uh, earrings using filigree wire. Uh, a lovely movement. It sort of embraces the face. Um, and it's very elegant. It sits yeah. very. And, and th these are big pieces. These are bold pieces. Lots of gold. And... Yes, there was a lot of gold then. I mean, obviously, the price of gold was no issue. So you wanted. He also created body uh, in, in the Byzantine um, collection. Sort of, you see the whole tunic. The models dressed in in, in gold chunks. Wow, that was, you know, obviously something we cannot do today. But those were the days, weren't they? Things those were the days, yes, those were the days. And, and you just say, oh, you know, you always have to be flexible and adapt and say, how can I still uh, give the same feeling, volume and everything with today's reality? Today's world, women dress, you know, we adapt scale, we still have scale, but we adapt a lot of pieces uh, so women can wear them from morning to evening. I'm wearing a very simple cork necklace, which is the most minimalist version uh, of, you know, um, what he did with 22. So you can see it's just a very pure form, very pure. So, and uh, can you see the importance of using 22 karat gold? And what, yes, why? That's the techniques such as granulation uh, that require, if they're done properly, they require the 22 karat um, metal. So look, we're going to show you a picture of uh, granulation because we like it because it's got a feather in it. Yes. So, so that, that's in your workshops where you have some 35 people working, right? That's right. That's right. But not everyone can do that. This, this is tedious workmanship. I, I'm wearing some chunkier bracelets um, in uh, 22 with a granulation and I'll show you close up the, a piece with, with turquoise. Um, we use the stones now, we use a little bit bolder um, in, in the past, the, the, the stones were slightly smaller. Stones are all complementary to the design, um, but we also like the bold of them, whether they are precious or semi-precious. Wow. So I can really see that um, you've got a very strong look. So what is it that makes a La La Unis jewel a La La Unis jewel, even, you know, throughout all these decades? They're still recognizable. Well, one thing we say, and which is the decades, is that every piece of jewelry has a story. It's jewelry. So that, that, that was father's idea when he created something, uh, to have a piece beautiful, uh, you know, complements a woman's beauty, character, personality, but at the same time, story to tell. It's a conversation, sometimes symbolic, meaningful. Um, and of course, all of that, in his material of choice. He loved gold. He loved the warmth of gold. And that's why he used uh, also a lot of 22 karat gold. Right. Um, that's but, a fine thing. And you, you use the same techniques, same sort of inspirations, but you've evolved because I know you showed me a picture of a snake bracelet, which I think we've got one here, the, the one with the, yeah, this one here. And this was, this was one of your father's designs, wasn't it? That's right, that's right. This is a, a very um, close um, reproduction of a museum, which is actually how he started. Um, to go back a little bit, you know, uh, tourism started growing in the 60s. Uh, and his idea of, um, sorry, uh, there we go. His idea of bringing new life into goldsmithery coincided with the time when tourism started booming uh, in And tourism and take with them something that reminded them of their wonderful stay, reminded them of Greece. So he started first looking at museum pieces and he said, okay, it's a challenge how to use them, how the techniques of the time, techniques. And then once he mastered that, then he started creating collections inspired by. And sometimes the inspiration was very close to the original. Sometimes it was just a detail and I detail, a detail from a mosaic, but you would always like to show where it came from. So mm -hmm. this continues. We still today, we continue that tradition and we create actions in the same way. 
adding, of course, new jewelry processes. Maria loves to experiment with textures, how she can show form in different ways. So I can show you the, for example, a contemporary snake uh, ring, which is uh, a gay, very, which has its source in the ancient, but then exactly, but then it's, it's uh, much more contemporary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and there's a really a super minimalist one, isn't there, that really shows, yeah, that one, that, that one, look. Yeah, this one. yeah which yeah. is, yeah. oh, that, yes. Yeah, so, so a very ancient inspiration, one that your father got from a museum, which now you have brought totally up to date for a new generation. Yes, we, well, we, we want, I mean, we say that our jewellery is ageless, and, and we do that because, um, you know, when we have um, mothers that have passed on their their children and we have a young girl in her 20s coming wearing the piece there's nothing that gives you more pleasure than to see how jewelry lasts throughout the ages and I always say that it's how you wear the piece you know you, you may have some old family heirlooms you may have some old jewelry uh, very often it's how you wear it how mm. some you can readjust you can give them a little new fresh air a lot of it depends on how you present it. And I encourage uh, friends and, and clients to wear it like they would feel comfortable with it. If you're comfortable with jewelry, you wear it well, it shows well, um, it speaks about you, about who you are, what you like. So I, I encourage people to be inventive, mm -hmm. just mix things around. Absolutely. And one of the collections that has endured is the one inspired by one very famous, beautiful lady, so if we put a picture up, I'm sure everyone will recognize oh, her. Yes, yes, yes. Not as beautiful as Helen of Troy, from where the, the collection comes. The yep. Helen of Troy collection, covered in uh, Emilian by Heinrich Schliemann. And exactly, yes. Our father did this whole uh, collection inspired by the drawings, because at the time the treasure was lost. Since then... Yeah, the, look, we've got the drawings. Look at that. Aren't we organized? <laughs> all the beads. I'll show you actually... Uh, some of the pieces. Uh, you, you even have a, a, a more contemporary view wearing them in the movie Hancock. Not, not exactly uh, the same oh. sort of inspiration, but <laughs> at least they're on wearing with the bracelets and uh, the earrings. And you also have a bit to see the deep. Uh, there's also granulation. There also detail of the motif coming down, which because I, I'm I usually don't wear very well big pieces. My oldest carries them beautifully. I'm usually from for less is more, but it depends what you can carry. And here you also see a single strand, which is just as elegant. Um, yeah. Just not, not to underestimate the, the beauty also of the smaller. Yeah, it's simplicity, but, but it, it it's so evocative because we all know those shapes. We've seen them in history books and museums, and it's amazing to see them in jewelry worn by Charlize Theron. So, yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Helen of Troy. Yeah. There you'll see also, uh, you'll see um, uh, a new version I'll show you that, that Maria created where she's added little touches of diamonds. So you have the individual uh, <laughs> which are strung over a hand-woven chain with a little diamond motif throughout, exactly. And those are the, the, the different versions. And, it, and, and you say hand-woven, that's a technique that's been around for centuries, hasn't it? And, and yes. It coupleness, doesn't it? That yes, we, we use it a lot. I'll show you one of the original pieces, which is still very much very popular today, and which we um, work in many ways. That's the hand, uh, so the Hercules knot motif. Mm, beautiful. Uh, friendship and love uh, and we, we, we I mean today I have to say you can also find this technique machine once you've seen the original made by hand knitted like you would knit thread um, the softness of it the smoothness of it um, there's something so special it just you know and then you wear it and it also takes the temperature of your body, you know whether you wear it yeah. in, it just gets that warm yeah, really. beautiful. That's such a classic that piece and I think one that people really identify with the name Lalonis as well, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Definitely. And, and there was, um, I like how you draw inspiration from all parts of Greece and um, the Epirus collection is from the north of Greece. Is that right, Demetra? Yeah? 
I have all this jewel in front of me. I have to just file it up properly. I wish I could have my camera here, but uh, <laughs> Yes. Oh, talk about the Everest. So th this is the, inspired by the costume. These beautiful, colourful, embroidered costumes, so ornate. And... By costumes uh, from the 18th and 19th century, uh, mm -hmm. and ob objects from the north of Greece, mm -hmm. and um, it, it gave a great opportunity to Maria to work uh, with colours and with a certain texture um, in the gold. I'll a few of the pieces again. We also used a lot of different colors. We used the rubies, the emeralds, sapphires, turquoise, um, and I'll just show you just different versions. Oh, we can just put the inspiration again because I think it's so good, don't you? The one of the lady with the, yeah, oops, <laughs> Our iPad went crazy. So th this, I think, is so interesting because you can really totally see the connection there, can't you? So something very traditional. Yeah. And then you can see also, let me see, a, a little pendant. Mm -hmm. Um, and you can also see a bird with emeralds. Mm, that's beautiful, yeah. And very often it's nice to combine, you know, the, the gold pen emerald earring. You know, you have the same theme, but you can be more creative. And then you can also see uh, the turquoise version. So it, it's adapted to many different colors and, 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 and styles. Some with a few more uh, elements of diamonds, some less. And a little bangle bracelet, which, which you can match up with uh, different, um, different. Angle, and then you dress it the uh, bejeweled. Beautiful, yeah. And, and yeah, those so bangles are, of course, so popular because you can stack them, you can mix and match them. We've got a nice photograph of them, haven't we, Christine? Yeah. The fifth jumper, the red jumper picture. <laughs> we spent a lot of time organizing these. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So I think, Dimitri, this talks about how you as women running a jewellery company uh, create jewellery that women can really wear in their own way, feel comfortable. Well, you know, there's four of us. My mother, so we cover a lot of generations, and then mm -hmm. we have ten uh, children between four, five boys and five girls. Uh, mm -hmm. Happens to also love jewelry, so he we use him as a model, and he tries to he tries out the more unisex pieces that we do because we like what we think of of men very much. Mm -hmm. And um, between all of us, um, I think we get a we want to get a of. Uh, is best for everybody, you know? I mean, I have a certain style. Maria, has... it's nice to have a conversation, to hear each other's point of view. Fine. Sometimes I'm a bit too strict. I'm a bit too black and white. <laughs> Maria, and she introduces something new, and I may say, and then I say, oh, yes, maybe, you know, we ways. This, I think, is very important, not just the designer, she's the creative director. She's very open to, to the feedback, important. Absolutely, yeah. And um, I, when you said something new, I, I know one of your newest pieces, I think you've got it, is that little bird ring? Have you got that to show oh, us? I'll show you. Yeah, I just so cute. Yeah. Granulation work, and this is the dub. Uh, it, uh, that one, yeah, yeah. It, it gets, um, which, that's a technique. Exactly with this technique, and even though the duck is classical uh, and very classic way, it sits on a very temporary square base, which, believe it or not, is square. I doubted my first, but then I tried it, I wore it, and it's uh, super comfortable. And super contemporary, isn't it? Like minimalism with this incredible technique and this granulation technique. Um, can you explain a little bit how it works? There's the other thing, you seem to like that a lot the granulation one again <laughs> so can you just tell us what's happening here Demetra because all the tiny little beads of gold on the surface but it has to be very exact because you cannot and unsolve you know it doesn't have too much space for error so once you create your tiny beads or whatever size you want them you then apply your surface uh, based on the design uh, you want to yeah, so that's very ancient. And you also do um, filigree is another one, isn't it? I think we've got a picture of, is this, is this filigree? I'll, I'll is that screen or is that, is that, no, that's. No, that's the hand woven chain because they're two different techniques. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 22 karat gold has 
there. Uh, this is a filigree wire. Mm-hmm. Mm, beautiful. Um, and I will also show you a combination of uh, filigree and granulation. Oh, yeah. This beautiful sodalite ring. Is that right? Uh, that's exactly. That's the sodalite mm -hmm. And I'm looking for it here. Yeah, and somebody later on will do this. Someone wants to see your earrings. My, the, I'll show you my earrings, but this That's is right. a granulation semi hoop. So the granulation with this diamond set. Yes, little touches. And here is the the piece I mentioned, which is um, an exquisite example of granulation and filigree at the same time. Absolutely beautiful. And that is one of your sort of traditional pieces, isn't it? That design was from your father's era. Exactly. Exactly. But you can see how it continues. You know, you can, you know, you develop things, you show them differently. Still, this is there, the core is there. Then it's up to us to build it up and give it our own. You know. Yeah. Well, and Maria said when we were talking earlier that um, no design ever dies. It just is reinterpreted. And I think the, the flowers, the wild flowers of Greece is quite a good example of that, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. We, I mean, my father created this collection cultural it was uh, all these flowers by the wildflowers of Greece and uh, they were big and important uh, and then we actually made them into uh, jewelry now for some reason uh, the yeah I can show you the flower but the sorry I've, I've messed up the, the order I'm making your life difficult it's like a <laughs> bazaar of jewelry around you that we can't see yeah someone has stolen Someone loved my flowers too much and took them away. Sorry, I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can talk about something else if you want. Do you want to talk about it? Yeah. I'll show you the flower design um, as it, it appears in the Aurelia, which is the golden one, uh, which was based on a technique called Interacile. It was a, a metal work. Um, is, 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 is which is the right one? That's yeah. based on source of inspiration. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Okay. And we did some uh, we did some lovely pieces, which are actually, um, can you see how, how they move? Mm. They are articulated. And here, uh, a pair of earrings with another version. Mm -hmm. Very flexible and articulate. So, so you're getting a really big look. Um, f you get the quite light. I mean, I, sh I know you put them on your ear the other day and showed me, and you could really see the difference between uh the light and a really thing look and the small ones which were perfect for the day yet all from the same design and yeah look at that yeah and then if I remove my my torque necklace um, I can show you also the bigger which I wear on their own I mean they're very dramatic amazing amazing I think that's that one isn't it yeah yeah and it's sort of again articulation Lovely, very soft also to the feel, exactly. Yeah, that one, I'll show you. I love uh, chains and uh, yeah. love pendants actually because you know you can wear up, you can wear them in Chanel length, you know, you just twist the rope twice. Oh, you got caught in my earring. <laughs> That's the problem with having too much jewelry, Demetra. <laughs> <laughs> Hercules, not. <laughs> <laughs> do that also live. There we go. Oh, yeah. yeah, really, really pretty. And then the same. Um, there's another section where we should, we do this negative positive space, uh, which is the Nubia. And we can show you the inspiration. Look at this. We've got it. All here. Show you exactly, exactly. And this is actually buzz from the fifth millennium BC, from the uh, um, region in, in Africa and uh, Maria wanted to be fascinated by the strong volume but the delicate design the delicate linear design and uh, she was trying to find ways of showing that and it and giving it uh, in the piece just so you can see here. yeah we come close you can see a detail which was actually on another uh, piece yeah. if you see this little um, sculpture it's back is that little uh, exactly? Is that, that little? Yeah. Which are reproduced um, mm. around the surface of the of the 
of the pendant. Yeah, so that, that's inspiration from far and wide. Uh, it? it's, not just, it's, not, it's not just Greek inspiration now, you're inspired by culture uh, around the world. Because, you know, uh, we, we love Greek, our Greek heritage, we are passionate about it. Uh, that's in different versions. I'm mm -hmm. wearing diamond double version. This is with uh, tourmaline, uh, plain gold, um, on a peridot chain, and also with the uh, uh, diamonds. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and tell me about why you choose to use cabochons and the, the colors that you use. What, what's the history behind that? So, so very much, you know, part of the Byzantine collection. That's when you first start using a lot of colors. Just a fun uh, interpretation of, of Nubia piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, should we show a, bit, a Byzantine piece so that we can talk about the, maybe that, that's a good example. This is an old Byzantine piece, isn't it? The, the Nubia. Yeah. Move on to the, uh, then you move on to the Byzantine. Mm -hmm. So we were just talking about color. Sorry, I messed it up. I messed up the order. No. This is. <laughs> so, I mean, it's all this, we have all this, you know, mosaics which are extraordinary. Uh, it's almost impossible to capture that beauty. But obviously you try uh, with the stones. Uh, that's, for example, one of the portraits, uh, an inspiration of Theodore. Mm -hmm. And we started using them. I'll show you some other pieces. So the rubies, the, the stones we use complementary to the design. So we use them more now than in the past. Um, but the main idea is the design is the important thing. Stones come in to complement it. But we've been using a lot more stones to complement the pieces. A series of crosses that show different uh, techniques and, and uh, different uses of the stone. So this is with uh, 22 karat gold, uh, cabochon sapphires and enamel. That's beautiful. It's so striking. And I love the volume. And you hold it to the side, you see it's got real depth, hasn't it? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then uh, a different version with an emerald cut diamond, mm -hmm. a bit of granulation work around it. Again, you have the, the depth. And then you see a slightly more elaborate version uh, with cabochon rubies, uh, again, um, blue enamel and little touches, little stones on the sides just to embellish it even further. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, very Greek, <laughs> very Byzantine. From there, we go to a dramatic uh, ring, which, you know, has the architecture is uh, so typical Byzantine. And you can wear in the inner. Uh, you go to another one that shows more, uh, more the, about the dome and a bit of color. There's mm -hmm. a little of a bit of um, you know, adding the little granulation here and there. And then a more minimalist version, um, which sometimes uh, you know, you, you techniques of uh, art and you can. Uh, yeah, very beautiful. Hmm. Yeah, of Byzantium and the color. But um, another one I'll show you is, is a slightly more a contemporary version. There we go. Um, and it's again the the square because mosaic I mean, and the, the old and the new, right? Exactly. Yeah. And of course, this you know you create a piece and then there's a whole collection that that can be born from it. This piece you have the pendant, earrings, different rings. Um, there's so much. I mean. When, you can you never stop designing. One idea brings the next. It's just endless. And we spoke a little bit about um, hand hammering. So I want to show you, for example, uh, some pieces in, in hand hammering, which are, it will start with the, uh, let's see. Can you see again? This is from the new form. Very simple. This is a, an older uh, creation but very contemporary at the same time. This was from the 90s with an, uh, an amethyst that has been carved to, to go around it. Um, and then uh, one, we can read it, we'll show you. And I know you've got the petal ring there, which I like. So yeah, that's a, with, with the, the... With what they 
Herkimer diamonds. Uh, her, it's not a, a diamond. It's it's a double-ended crystal. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. In uh, a mine, actually, in upstate New York. Yeah. It's homage to to state because of this great stone. There. You see also the the petal stone, which can be worn uh, with a rope as a pendant. You can just wear it sort of hanging um, with a double knotted rope, or you can wear it in a ring. And then you have two more go in it. So you have a petal that goes within. Uh, right, now, right now, we were sold out. I cannot show you that one. And all, all that is based on um, an older original creation, which was again Neolithic, your form. Sometimes we call it an abstract swan. Sometimes we call it the banana ring. You can call it whatever. Not the banana ring, please. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think the Neolithics called it the banana ring, did they? Sorry? I don't think it was called that in Neolithic times. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> sense of humor sometimes. We cannot take ourselves too seriously. No, we never do that. That's not a problem. <laughs> And then I'll show you the petal um, with a uh, aqua stone and a pink tourmaline. Uh, we were playing with uh, light and, and shadow and how the texture of gold shows, hand hammering shows, um, and again, embellishing it with a few diamonds um, for fun, just to have it here. More, more. Yeah, so what, what's interesting is this is a very unique way of using color because you're using the reflection of the stone on the gold that's um, enveloping it. So I think that, that's really interesting, and very, very much you, because it's awesome. true approach color. Like how my father used to create you. She works very goldsmiths, and you see along the way what it does. It's not mm -hmm. the way doing the design and then passing it on. It's a work. And, you know, just because we're talking about hammering, you know, we to have we like to use stones uh, this is on a, uh, and it's the same I'll show you where is again so it's, um, there so it's it's very soft surface of the 22 carat hand hammered surface tiny bit of diamond on uh, an onyx piece of stone wow. uh, and I just again I, I love wearing pendants so I, and I love chains, so you may find me stacking chains. Um, <laughs> Very good. Well, I think that, that piece really shows us the incredible arc that is um, the design of Lanaunis inspired by something that is so timeless, yet you've managed to keep it so contemporary and fresh. And I hope that everybody who's been watching this now has a better idea of um, Lanaunis and Demetra. <laughs> How she loves the jewels, and we've just 